Thousands of people have landed the data jobs using DataCamp's courses, but they weren't geniuses or lucky or otherwise they wouldn't be making this video. They simply chose the best courses, they learned the right skills, and then they got hired. And DataCamp is actually the biggest platform for learning data skills with over 15 million learners. They've been around for over a decade, focusing on learning by doing, and if there's any place to learn data skills, it's DataCamp. But with 540 courses available, most people waste time on the wrong courses that never actually lead to anything. So what I've done is I've actually handpicked the seven best courses to help you land a job in data, whether that's data analyst, data scientist, data engineer, or more. And what I did is I actually analyzed course quality, job relevance, and whether these skills will still be valuable in the future. And one of these courses is even better than expensive boot camps. So let's get into it and here's what I found. And just a really quick, this video is not sponsored and I can say whatever I want, but if you're signing up, you might as well use my link in the description to get a discount, which also gives me a small commission so I can keep and make videos like this. That's all. Number one. Okay, so we're gonna start with data analytics. So if you wanna become a data analyst, this is how you do it. The first one on the list is the Associate Data Analyst in SQL. Now, SQL is the most important skill for aspiring data analysts by far, and it's in more than 50% of the job listings. So if you wanna get a job in data, you should probably learn SQL. DataCamp actually has a certification, meaning that you'll be certified in SQL from DataCamp. And while that's not magically going to get you a job, let's be realistic, it can definitely help. So here's the course and let's take a quick look together. You will gain the SQL skills that you need to query a database, analyze results, and become a SQL proficient data analyst with no prior coding experience required, which is pretty good as well. So it's gonna be about 39 hours long. It's not the longest course, but that also gives you time to learn other things like Tableau or Python, which can help you resume a lot. So it's definitely worth learning as well. Because while SQL is really important and helpful, in this competitive landscape, you're gonna need to have some more skills as well. So the course covers a lot of different things about SQL and also two different projects where you'll be working hands-on with SQL. Now it's gonna be beginner level and I did take a look at the specifics. So if you already work a lot with SQL, you could probably skip over the first few parts of the course. Otherwise, it's really good repetition because with SQL, it's really the fundamentals that matter the most. All right, so number two, and that's gonna be data analyst with Python. Now, Python is a really popular programming language in data, and if you haven't heard about this one, you're literally living under a rock because it's actually the most common one except SQL itself, which is technically a query language, but with details, whatever. So here's exactly what you need to know. DataCamp has an official Python cert for data analysts, and once you get this one, you're gonna be a DataCamp certified data analyst with Python. And this course is gonna show you how to prepare for that certification. So it's kind of like a learning track, that's what they call it. And here's what it says. Develop your data analytic skills in Python. Gain the data analyst skills to manipulate, analyze, and visualize data with no coding experience required. Now it's gonna take you about 36 hours to finish. And in my mind, that's almost too quick because there are actually multiple projects in the course. So I don't see how the average person would finish it that quickly. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just a little bit suspicious about the time frame. Anyway, I think it's a really good course because the more practice that you get with Python, the better you'll become. And surely this course includes a lot of practice. You start by learning the basics of Python. You do a project, learn some pandas, which is a very popular library for Python in data analytics. You do a project, you do some more Python, applying it to data analytics because there's a ton of stuff that you can do with Python. And this course focuses on data analytics stuff with Python, not web development or machine learning. You do some more projects, you learn some statistics and things like that. And finally, a capstone project, which I think was about football games, which is pretty cool. And if you don't want to take the certification, you will already have a credential for completing the course. But I highly recommend taking the certification as it's free and included in the subscription. So if you already have that, then why not take the cert? All right, so number three is up next. And here's where it gets really interesting. I'm gonna get so much hate for saying this from both sides because the next one is data analytics with R. R is a programming language like Python, but it's mainly used for statistical computing and data analysis. So here's the thing. You don't need to learn the skill to become a data analyst and you might as well use Python to do the same things. Python is also more versatile and more popular which is why I kind of recommend both beginners to focus on Python, but R has its place and it's used more in academia and the original Google data analytics certificate actually decided to use R for some reason. So there's a lot of people that know the basics and there are many jobs and people still using this language to this day. 
But in the future, I don't know what the future is gonna be for R, to be honest. And this course is basically the same thing as the previous one, giving you the basics of data analytics while integrating R into everything that you do. And there's a certification for this one too. So if you're now thinking, Lucas, which one do I pick? Do I go for Python or do I go for R? I would say straight up, go for Python. I don't care, I'll take all the hate. Unless you have a specific reason to pick R, which there are some good reasons to pick their language, but if you haven't thought about this, you're probably not in that position. So then I wouldn't recommend you to start R. I would just say, go with Python, it's easier. Just get started with it right away. All right, so now we're moving to some data visualization. And this course is a data analyst in Power BI. Now, if you don't know what Power BI is, you've been literally living under a rock again. Seriously, man or women, shout out to our about 10% female viewers working on these numbers, so share it with your friends. Anyway, let's get back to it. This is by far the longest course on the list at I think about 50 hours so far. And I still don't know who's counting these hours because when I look at this list and I see 17 different modules, I'm just thinking, how am I gonna finish this in 50 hours? The original data analytics cert was about six months at 10 hours a week which was surely more than 50 hours. But I guess they made the calculations somehow. Now, Power BI is Microsoft's data viz software, and it can be compared to Tableau, which is owned by Salesforce. And it's kind of like the battle between the giants of Salesforce and Microsoft. This course is gonna help you prepare for the official Microsoft certification called PL300. And if you haven't heard about this one, you're not living under a rock because it's Microsoft's only certification for data analysts. And Microsoft is kind of the king of these types of certs. So I'm gonna spare you all the details of this course. I'm not gonna bore you with that, but let me just tell you the most useful things. It's gonna give you an introduction, show you how to do some data viz, prepare data, transform data, model data, as well as some more in-depth stuff and also generating reports at the end. I try to be unbiased before I start reviewing these courses and I already assume that you know SQL if you start this one, but if you do, then it's probably like the best thing that you can do. Like literally, it's gonna help you directly prepare for Microsoft Cert and it's from Data Camp giving you some nice practical stuff and just a really good experience overall. So I can't promote this one enough. That's my final opinion. It's a really good Cert and a really good course. But don't leave yet because you're still gonna be missing the best things. And these are data science, data engineering, and ML learning tracks. But even if you wanna become a data analyst, these are really good too. Why? Because the landscape is pretty competitive and it can make you stand out. It's gonna teach you just a bit more than the average data analyst would know. And in this competitive landscape, you know what looks good on your resume? Well, more skills. So this is exactly what you need. Now, the first one is gonna be the Associate Data Scientist in Python. Now here, we're really breaking the scale because this one is about 90 hours long. And I mean, it's still pretty modest for learning all of these things and definitely worth it. And I've spent hundreds of hours just on video games and what did that give me? I would say a lot of enjoyment, but certainly not something I could get hired with. So 90 hours on this is worth it. Let's take a look. But the problem is the curriculum is too long to even take a look at. There are 37 modules. Like, where do you even start with this? Well, you start with an introduction to Python, and then it just goes on from there about everything to do with data science and Python. If you're gonna be a data scientist, you should obviously take all of it. But if you wanna become a data analyst, you can kind of try to nitpick some of the key things, like more practice in pandas, more Python projects and more data viz. You're not gonna benefit that much from some advanced data science stuff or machine learning, especially if you're not done learning data analytics already, which can you ever be? Anyway, really good course. All right, so the next one is the Python for data engineering course. A data engineer is kind of the backbone of data roles. And even if you're not gonna become a data engineer, it's really good to understand what they do and have the basics. A data engineer is entirely dedicated to getting data ready so that a data analyst or data scientist or a machine learning engineer can actually work with it. And that includes moving it to the right places, cleaning and preparing it, and just making it useful for the company. It's definitely not as fancy of a role because you're not gonna be doing some cool visualizations, you're not gonna be doing the cool analysis. And for that reason, it's not as common to hear about data engineering, but it gets paid six figures and there are lots of positions available. And honestly, I think it's one of the best opportunities in data because with more AI and things like that, data engineering is only gonna become more important as data quality and everything is gonna become more complex. Now, this course is only 40 hours long, but I will warn you, becoming a data engineer is significantly more difficult in terms of skills than let's say a data analyst. 
It's simply a lot more technical. So you're not going to land a job from this course, no way whatsoever. But it's still going to be a great way to start. And it begins with cloud computing and then Python. And you'll be doing all sorts of data engineering tasks in Python, which is the key language for data engineers. And it also includes some projects, some ETL, extract, transform, load. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but it's another key skill for data engineers. And so I always want to be honest with you guys. And here I have to say that if you just want to get a job quickly, this is not going to be the course for you. Data engineering is definitely worth putting your time into, again, with really high salaries and interesting work. But if you have no experience in data and no skills when you start, you're going to need so much more than this course. So if you're already a data analyst, for instance, this could be a great way to boost your skills and break into data engineering. But still, these skills are not going to hurt you. So if you want to get into any data role, it's always going to be good to have. And finally, this might be the most interesting one on the list, and that's going to be the machine learning in Python course. Now, machine learning usually scares people away as soon as you mention it, but this one is only 85 hours long, which is for machine learning pretty short. It's some advanced stuff, so let me just make that clear. And the course works with Python, but for machine learning, as well as some other skills you need for an ML position. It also includes various code challenges and hands-on projects, which is my favorite thing about it. But again, we're not gonna get into like the details details. And the big question is who should take this course? I would say that if you're starting from zero and you just wanna break into data, you should probably think about data analysts or something like that, and probably not machine learning. But if you wanna get into ML, this could be a really good option. And just know that kind of like data engineering, ML is quite difficult and requires a lot of skills. And when you start, you're not going to have these. So you'll have to learn a lot. What I will say, though, is that if you're coming from a data or from a programming background or something like that, this might be the perfect course for you to just boost your skills a bit and get closer to the ML position. And even if you don't want to work in machine learning, these skills are really valuable as well. Whether you're looking for data jobs or software jobs and having these on your resume can make you stand out a bit. So I always want to give you guys a broad understanding and also a specific understanding so you can understand how these things play a part and which one you should start with and take. Because again, you're going to be spending quite a bit of time on these courses. So it's very important that you take the right one for you. And everybody's situation varies. That's the important thing as well. But these are some of my personal favorites. And I'll leave a discount link down below and check out this video with more certificates right here.